Brian, we understand, we know what Chris Bosch is going to do if, <laughs> if, if LeBron right. goes to Cleveland. Yeah, Sar, uh, Ramona Shelburne and uh, Chris Broussard reporting tonight that uh, Chris Bosch has decided he will sign with the Houston Rockets if LeBron James leaves. We presume that would only be for the Cleveland Cavaliers. What's going on here is a cascading series of events. Essentially, the league is tired of waiting. Uh, at midnight tonight, league business for the new year opens. And shortly after that happens, Chandler Parsons is going to sign a three-year, $46 million offer sheet with the Dallas Mavericks. Now you're saying, what does that have anything to do with LeBron James? Mm -hmm. Well, Bosch has gotten nervous. In fact, really the first sign that there was real trouble with the big three was that Bosch went out and negotiated a backup deal with the Rockets. That deal is sitting there on the table. But as soon as Parsons signs this offer sheet, the Rockets have three days to match. We all expect them to match that offer. Once they match that offer, they, they lose the ability to get Chris Bosch. They don't have the salary cap space. So. The clock is starting. Bosch does not have time to mess around here. He cannot wait another 24 or 48 hours for LeBron James to make up what he's doing. Complicating matters even further is that the Rockets actually, to get Chris Bosch, would have to execute at least two trades. They'd have to trade Omer Sheik, mm -hmm. which they kind of have a deal for, but that deal is not official yet, and they'd have to trade Jeremy Lin. That would be step one. Step two would be they'd have to sign Chris Bosch, which would mean that LeBron would have made up his mind on the mm -hmm. heat. Then step three, they would have to match Chandler Parsons. They have to do it in that order. I know that that sounds weird. You're just going to have to trust me on it. They can't have Parsons and Bosch if they match Parsons before they sign Bosch. So, but they can still have Bosch and Parsons if Parsons offered after the trades are made. Is that what you're saying? Well, Parsons has the offer, and his offer can become official. He can sign it after midnight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Rockets definitely want to keep him, and they intend to match that offer. But if they match that offer, they will use up their salary cap space that they want to use for Chris Bosh. To even get that salary cap space, they have to make two trades. So in the Rockets' perfect world, trade Omer Sheik, trade Jeremy Lin, sign Chris Bosh, match on Chandler Parsons. Problem is, the Rockets can't control Chandler Parsons' clock once he signs that offer sheet. Three days begins, and they're going to be out of control. They also can't control what LeBron James is going to do. If LeBron waits and pulls this out another two days, the, the Rockets will be without a loss. So really what, what, what all this really means when you boil it all down is that LeBron is under a little bit of pressure to move forward here mm -hmm. out of genuine respect to his teammate and two-time championship teammate Chris Bosh because he knows the situation. He knows that if he drags this out, that he potentially is going to cost Chris Bosh his option. And that is one of the, 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 the things that's going on right now. So um, I do think that, you know, it's our belief and what sources are telling us that if LeBron re-signs with the Heat, that Chris Bosh is going to want to stay there. But if LeBron doesn't, Bosh all of a sudden becomes into play. And the Rockets are playing with a dangerous game here. They are either going to come out of this smelling beautifully, mm -hmm. having gotten Chris Bosh and retained Chandler Parsons, creating essentially a four-player quartet of guys on max contracts. James Harden, Chandler Parsons is a near max contract, Chris Bosh, Dwight Howard. Or they could end up coming out of this with three, or if things go really south and they, and they mismanage it and they can't execute these trades, they can come out of it with only two. So the Rockets right now have got to be on the edge of their seat. And Chris Bosh has got to be going crazy, wanting an answer from LeBron James. And so all of this is going to just press in on LeBron. And knowing LeBron like I do, he has respect for his teammate and Chris Bosh. He is going to want to try to make a decision to let that happen. So that is really where the dominoes are falling into place, and that is what is the pressure. And I'm telling you, in the league right now, Chris, mm -hmm. people are going crazy. These general managers are going crazy. Um, you know, it's affecting so many teams, and then we won't even get into the tentacles that are coming off of this. They're affecting other teams. Sometimes the, the stuff like this happens in, in, the, in this time of year, but this is an extreme case. And we haven't even talked about Carmelo Anthony, who, you know, and that, that's a whole other situation. So Chris Bosh, LeBron James, Chandler Parsons, Omer Sheik, um, Jeremy oh, Lin man. are all tied together right now, and they're all waiting for LeBron to make up his mind. And my head's spinning just trying to, to figure this all out. And then Mavericks fans are saying, okay, so how do we get Chandler Parsons then? Well, Chandler Parsons would have to have his offer sheet not matched, and there would be okay. a three day window. So with July 10th, starts at midnight tonight. They sign the offer hours. We sign the offer sheet. You know, how fast can the can the Mavericks get it to the Rockets? If I'm the Rockets, I'm hiding in a bunker for the next day to try to, <laughs> try to not get that offer sheet because as soon as you get it in your hand, the clock starts. And 
if the Rockets can't get their business taken care of mm. in the next three days and they don't have Parsons locked down, the Mavericks would then get him. But the expectation in the league is that the Rockets are going to match. That's, that's probably, out of everything I've just laid out, the, the most certainty is that the Rockets are going to match on Parsons. But the, the trades that they would have to make to get Bosch are, are not simple. They, they have, they, there's a trade out there that they're going to send Omer Sheik to the, to the New Orleans Pelicans. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, that trade can't even really be done because the Pelicans don't have the requisite cap space. Would Bosch still go there if they don't get to keep Parsons? Does that have any hinging on what Bosch does, Parsons? I, I don't think so. I think Parsons is going to be with the Rockets. The question is, can they get Bosch in there too? Okay. And it's a big gamble for Houston because this is going to be it. The, the, the Rockets are probably not going to have cap space for the next two or three seasons. This is their last bite at the apple. That's why they're under immense pressure to get this done. And really, while this, all this craziness is happening with the Knicks and the Lakers and the, and, the, and the Heat and the Cavaliers, the Rockets, if they could somehow execute this, could actually come out as a big winner. But they could also come out as a loser, having missed out on a chance to use their cap space. So, mm. um, you know, there's just a lot of people right now on the phone, pacing in hallways, you know, texting. Like you. Yeah, because there's just so much uncertainty, and they need some things to start falling into place. And the difference between now and yesterday is that now the time pressure begins mm -hmm. because the offer sheet to Chandler is the first major thing that creates a time pressure down the line. Well, it's interesting because it was one year ago, the Rockets were right here. It was uh, Dwight Howard in this situation. They landed the big fish last summer. Maybe they'll get Chris Bosh this year. But Brian Windhorst is saying if Chris Bosh, go, or excuse me, if LeBron James goes to Cleveland, Chris Bosh is going to go to Houston. We'll keep our eye on that. Brian Windhorst joining us again here on SportsCenter. I'm sure you'll be back eventually. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be on the phone. Yeah.